are you? This is Anthony Gray of Grayscale. We're going to do a panda today, which will bring an extreme delight to a certain someone who's bothering me about doing a panda. All right. Um, it's also a nice little study of what to do with uh, an animal or a subject that's mainly black and white. Okay. Um, I'm going to have the little fella um, laying down on a couple of pieces of round wood. So it would be wood, wood grain, um, the animal, and some greenery on, on the top. I've drawn the panda in. I already masked the panda with tape. Okay. Um, I use masking tape because you can see the pencil marks very clear when you go to cut. The painter's tape is just going to separate the panda itself um, from the wood. All right, and uh, we're gonna get right to it. Okay, I'm going to use my uh, little lotion or my shampoo and water mix. Um, I'm gonna just a light touch down here on the bottom. So I'm going to take some black, only on the corner of the brush, you should be able to see it there with the lights. I'm going to go back and forth on my, on my uh, imagined palette here. It's just um, tracing paper. A little bit of just a touch of white, okay, and uh, some sienna. I'm gonna go back and forth again. A little touch of the shampoo, get it a little, little loosened. Go back into the sienna. So it's just sienna and white. And I'm gonna go here on the bottom, just a little bit of highlights here and there, and still in the back and forth motion. Okay, I'm gonna get a little more white. I want to accent the white a little more. Just like so. Okay, now I'll let it dry. Get more white. Get a little more sienna. I can do this with a smaller brush too if I chose to. I'll just put uh, dab in a little more lotion. Sh uh, shampoo not lotion I'll probably continuously say that and I'm gonna go here towards the top right up in here back and forth cuz I wanted a little lighter on the top that's all that's all I'm doing alright now I'll let that dry I'll be going over it again alright Rinse off the other brush here. Dry it off in my little bucket. Put it back. I am going to get a smaller brush for some of the larger. Here we are. It's a half, uh, not even a half, it's a quarter inch brush. Maybe two quarter inch. It's a half inch brush, maybe. I'm going to dip into the black for some of the like the little knots in the wood. You know what I'm saying? I'm dipping into a little bit of the uh, the lotion. It just opens up the paint a little bit, makes it smoother. Solid black, also. I'm not really a fan of using solid black into anything, really. But for this one, I'll do it. I'm gonna accent this line a little more in spots just in, in spots have it a little thicker a little thinner it'll help sell the illusion of the two pieces of wood coming together but that'll also be later on 
But uh, that wasn't my real thing. He's just going to get some uh, grains of wood. The wood knot. Something like that. And maybe a nice, nice one further down. Something like this. Something like that. And maybe one down here coming right off the to the tape. Something like that. And maybe just string it along in here. Just a little knots of wood here and there. Yeah, I'll put one up here just, just to put one up there. Alright. That's all I would need. Okay. I'll rinse this off. Now, if I wanted to just to add a little more variety to this wood, okay, I'll show it to you. It makes no difference. I am going to use some uh, phthalo blue and just a slight touch of black, the smallest hint of black, and mix it in there. I want a darker kind of a, a blue, like a dirtyish blue. All right, so phthalo blue, a little black. I'm just playing around with it a little bit. looks like the uh, two panels of a log cabin and if you can see the roundness in the shadow you're good to go alrighty alrighty hey it's not as bad as you think it's not that not that tough all right and you have the bottom half finished all right I will take off yonder tape peel it off slowly like a pull method like so. Lift and pull. Lift and pull. Alright. Now, as of right now, because of the angle of the camera and I got lights over on each side, you will not see that there is a bear under here. Alright. Cover right up here. The pants. I will have to wait for this to totally dry. Then I will continue with the green up here. But until, uh, before I can really continue with that, I'm going to have to cover up this part. Alright. <coughs> and before I can really cover it up, <coughs> I have to wait for it to dry. Because if I try to peel it apart now, it's going to lift up the, uh, the paint. So I'll just have to wait for her to totally dry. And then when, they, when it's totally dry, I will come back. And we're going to put some... Uh, uh, some shrubbery back here, maybe even the hint of some bamboo shoots. Um, so, let's wait for this to dry and I'll be right back. Hey there, welcome back. Alright, let's adjust the camera a little bit. Uh, let's zoom in a tad. Alright. We're going to have a nice, almost bokeh type of effect of yellow, different versions of green up here. But I'm going to do it in a way, straight up and down, but in different angles. It gives you representation of different types of bamboo in the background, something like that. I do have different variances of uh, the colors of, of yellow, a light, and a dark green, and I got blue in here. Before I do any of that, of course, I'm going to use my nice coating of shampoo. Okay, just a light coating. Don't really need too much. Keep it kind of slick, okay. Now with the heat of the lights, is it actually drying up right now because I have the lamp so close, okay. And I don't even necessarily need a smaller brush to do what I'm about to do. I'm using a uh, sap green. Let's see what type of green I got here. This other green. Oh, it's called apple tart, but it's it's a uh, craft craftsman green there. It's got a lot of yellow in it. And what I'm going to do is a one stroke variety type of deal with uh, the sap. Apple green in the, in the, in the sap green. Alright. 
And when you do the one stroke method, don't be shy with the paint. Okay. You're gonna need these for the, the pull effect off anyway. And maybe just put it all depends on where you want your light source also. But let's maybe put one at an uh, well more of an up and down angle right about here. Something like that. Right here. Now I want that a little bit brighter. So I'm going to mix some yellow in with the lighter portion of that green. And maybe just a touch of white. I don't have enough white and I have to put some more white in there. Because I want to, obviously I want that to separate a little better. Uh, kind of like so. Something like that. Something like that. I need you to really see that it's, it's actually there. All right. Uh, I'm going to have to get some more white. Ugh. Titanium white. So I'm going to mix the titanium white in with the lighter green. Because I want it to really stick out. And I want to mix in a little bit of blue on the dark green side. Because I want them to stick out more th uh, from the background. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing in with the light green and the, the sap green, the blue and the white. So I can get a deeper color. And I'm going to use a little bit of the shampoo. I should have used that before. Because it helps the paint flow, oops, flow better. All right, now I'm going to go over it again. Right here. You should be able to see it now. stick right out okay right here all right now in case it's not as dark as you would want you can also use just a slight touch of black and I mean only the tip all right it really set the uh, that, that, that green apart so I'm using black a little bit of blue back and forth motion just like that okay and I'll add the um, little bamboo stripes going across a little bit later that's pretty much the kind of color and shade that I want all right and I'm only using the smallest amount of uh, lotion because it does thin your paint a little bit I'm going back into the light yellow I'm going into the white Okay, I'm going to go back into the sap green. That's what I'm doing. And just a slight touch of black. And we're going to do another one. Got one there. Let's do one right around. Uh, let's do the opposite side. I'm next to the yellow. So we'll make that the highlight side right here. One here. Switch it around. Put one right about here. Just like so. Alright, now you should be able to see you see how it sets apart. Okay. Got more light on one side. Let's go. Let's go this one up straight up and down on this one here. Right here. I obviously need more on the bright side. To separate that one edge. I'll leave the dark side alone. Just want to separate and brighten up the one edge here, like so. Okay. Some of these can be closer to you. Some of these can be uh, a little further away. All depends. All right. And continuing to have fun, I am darkening. Use a little more. Just a touch of black. I got a nice coating of lotion, shampoo, on the. Uh, my little palette so I'm just going back and forth all right let's have one meet let's go 
off the blue tape and go in this area here. Bamboo is not crooked or they don't twist and turn. They can grow uh, pretty much they're straight but they can be pretty much tilted in any direction. Okay. And that's basically what I'm doing here. Okay. And I can add a few more. <coughs> what I'm going to do right now, I want to put a little highlight side on some of these guys. Just on the edge. A little bit here and there. I want it a little bit on the yellow side. And that's all I'm doing. And it kept separate a little bit from the background. Okay. Don't necessarily have to do it on the dark side, but highlight a little bit on the on the uh, other side. All right. And we're gonna add some more and some more. You have them overlap. All of that. Okay. A little more. I'm putting a little bit of dark blue. A little bit of black. Going back into my yellow. Go back into the white. And we're going to, especially here on this side, let's have one overlap. Let's have him come at an angle, maybe, and eh, have him come right in front of this guy, just like so. Continuously back and forth. Now I didn't use any lotion. Shampoo on this guy here. But that's okay. Right in front. Right in front of the other guy. I'm going to use a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow. Run on the edge. Put a little highlight on this guy. Right around there like that. Okay. I'm going to add some more and some more and some more. Um, let's rinse this brush off. Bamboo, bamboo have little sections on them. <clears throat> as you well may know. Okay, I'll use the liner brush real quick. I'm going to use a little bit of this bright yellow. And then I'm going to go one swipe across for the dark green. And bamboo kind of have, like I said, they're in sections. Like so. Round it off. And it depends on you the closer the section the further away it would appear alright even on this guy here you can put them a little closer together if it happens to break apart that's also fine okay doesn't matter more yellow I'm gonna go right across green dark green it gives me that little separation of color there. See it there? Alright. And we'll go this little fella here. I am not concerned about covering the whole thing. I'm just switching it around. But keep them in a circular motion, like upside down you. Twirl it around if you want. Doesn't matter. Your focus really isn't going to be on the bamboo anyway. It's going to be on the hairy guy that eats them. Alright. Don't matter. I'm just twirling it around. That's all. Just like so. Okay. I love. Okay. Come on. Disappear. Thank you. All right. Now that I've got those few done. Okay. I mean, you could even. Let me show you. Instead of me just talking about it, I'll use uh, a brush that's a little bit on the uh, ragged side. Uh, maybe I'll use this here. It's a fan brush. Let's say you want to put a little detail into 
the uh, bamboo that's a little closer to you. Right, you see some of that happening? You don't have to do it with every one. Maybe for the ones that are a little closer. Okay. Like I said, maybe for these guys that are a little, little closer to you. Add a little striations to them here and there. Up to you. Don't even have to be on all of them, really. You know, just have fun with it. Like so. Put some back here in case one's jealous. He didn't get no stri no no stripes. Okay. Just like that. Alright. Let's take a smaller brush I'm just going to rinse off my half inch my three quarter inch rather let's go with the half inch brush now I don't want some of this glaze leaking through on my wood Okay, I won't be doing this anymore, so I'm going to slightly pull away from the bottom here. Now you can really see the difference. If I move the camera toward the center, you can really see it. Okay, but I do have it lighter. Even though it's glazed, I do have it lighter in the center, darker here on the sides. I do have to let it dry. Okay, I also don't really want any of the color leaking through on the animal itself but since it's black and white um, you really don't want it leaking on where the parts are, are bright but that won't matter because look um, titanium white will cover it up anyway will not matter all right so with that said we have the foreground finished we have the background also finished only thing left is the bear all right the panda itself all right, I'm going to take a little bit of tissue. Carefully wipe the edge of the tape. Even on this guy here, I'm going to pat some of this down. Some of it may have leaked through, maybe. And if it did, there's no worry about it. That's all right. Just pat a little bit of that away from the tape. I will peel the tape away on the next segment here, and we will start on Mr. Panda. Mr. Panda will probably be a one-shot. Um, I might maybe move the camera a little bit, so it'll be kind of a dead-on shot here. Maybe, let's see how, how it looks if I do move her around just for a second. Because I wanted you guys to get kind of a... Yeah, that's that. That might look a little bit better for you guys. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay. You can see a picture of her anyway when it's done. It'll be posted on my Facebook page. All right, Mr. Panda here. Uh, this is pretty much, yeah, it's been pretty much almost a done deal. It's almost dry. All right, like I said, I got lights right above here. I got light. Right up in the front here, so I got a lot of heat focusing in on this thing, so um, it won't take much for it to dry. Let's remove Mr. Panda here, the tape from Mr. Panda. Now, some of it may have bled through, I'm pretty sure it has. Now, I have to be careful that I don't rip. Some of this tape on uh, the paper from the tape so it's kind of a lift pull method to take it off all right and that's what i'm doing right now just be extremely careful be gentle as you can especially when it's a little wet you really don't want to peel now, on a canvas, you don't have to worry about it, but this is not canvas. This is a, a watercolor paper, 150-pound watercolor paper. I'm using a pull-lift method. Okay, you see I'm going back and forth. 
back to side. Okay. And be careful towards the edge. This is the final piece right here. Now, it did not bleed through as bad as I would figure it would, which is a good thing. Okay, there she, or he is. Now, like I said, I got a little bit of, of uh, bleeding in here. That's no big deal because uh, I do believe that part of her is uh, him or her is, is uh, black. This is the white part in here which is no bleeding, no nothing. Black. All white. Black, 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 black. Nose black, mouth black. Paw black. This is actually the back leg. Um, the panda's front paws is tucked underneath. He slash she, it, is sleeping. All right. And there you have it. Now, as you can see, the... Um, glaze has settled in it's got the greenish blue black all right only to a certain point all right and then you have uh, these which is also covered but they're not as deeply set in as the other um, as the other part okay what might throw you off is some of the, the messy of across the tapes all right and that's that's okay when it's peeled peel away it gives a much cleaner look so don't worry about that when I do come back let me let this paint uh, settle let it dry this is all dry this is, this is done okay um, when I come back we'll work on Mr. Panda and, um, show you tell about brush strokes and, and, and all that good stuff and um, what else yeah I guess that'd be about it all right so I shall return it okay welcome back I do have a representation of Mr. Panda here on the phone. Okay. And it's time to paint Mr. Panda in. Alright. Now, highlights for an animal or a subject that is uh, black. You can use either a gray of some sort or um, a dark blue. I will choose a dark blue okay um, for this guy um, you can also choose to use a little bit of medium for him if you would like or not it's totally your choice it's all in the style you would like to uh, blend your subject okay I'm gonna wet my one inch brush with a little water dip a little bit of medium not much and uh, I want to cover, let's deal with this, uh, the black area first on the bear. I will tap into his ear and with the brush and the bristles I'm going almost a semi circle because it gives the appearance of the white hairs going into the black fur. I'm just pressing a little bit while still maintaining that circle. You can keep this in here it's pretty solid. It's mainly the outside edge you're looking for. Okay. Keep it pretty dark in the inside. Like so. All right. Like I say, as we get into the white, I'll make the streaks in a circular pattern. Okay, to represent the fur going around the ear. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other on the other side here. Get as close as I can to the edge. 
Now this is obviously a smaller brush so I can go right along the tree line here and in a semi-circle type of fashion even for where the white and the black meet little stabbing motion that we're doing right along the side here and then just block in the inside of the ear don't matter about the inside is solid anyway okay mainly what's going on on the outside here all right the eyes the panda's eyes surrounded by the hair okay I will definitely go this is where it's important to go with the flow of where the hair is so I am really majorly concerned about how it looks on the outside edge I'm just turning the brush around I kind of like the way that the, the uh, hairs are going with it okay and I will show you what to do with the eyes. I'm going to blacken all of this in, in here. Really solid. But I don't want to destroy too much of that edge. Something like that. Okay. I can reshape this patch as I go along without making it look or like uh, without making the patch grow. I should say that's pretty much the shape okay just getting in some more Mars black and once again I'm going to tap in turning the brush around as I do it I am concerned about just the outside edge switching my hands over try to keep as close to that line that I drew if you get a little nervous and you need a smaller brush and that's okay too all right and then I'll just deepen in the inside with the solid color all right if you get a little bit on the wood that's fine because it's all it does add to it and you're going to glaze a shadow anyway all right now there's a little bit of I won't use it I won't use this brush for it on his eye the lower part because you got to try to maintain the shape of his eye patch I will use I'll use a liner brush get into the Mars black and this shape kind of goes along in here a little downward arrow like that just like so okay I like the way all that turns out his nose I'm going to block in the entire nose actually I will do it in this fashion it's got little micro hairs on its nose obviously I'm mainly concerned about the outside edge now here underneath his nose a little little fine a little sh more defined okay all up under here so that's a little more defined I'm gonna get a little bit of water get an inky consistency of my Mars black You get it a lot looser. It also, um, also depends. This tube, Mars Black, it came up, comes out in a nice um, jelly roll type of uh, consistency. So I just loosened it up. It still keeps its opaqueness, but it flows off the brush so much e easier. Just like so. Now, he's got little hairs, little bits and pieces sticking up here on the top. So, draw like little, little bumps or whatever. 
or that some of the fur. You can also clean that up with um, with uh, white paint when you get to it. His mouth, he's got that. His lips are black. Okay, and they're not really too smooth because you got obviously the little microfiber hairs, the little baby hairs. But we can do that with white once this dries. So I'm not too concerned with all of that. Just blacking in on the corner here. And it's got to have a roundness to it. Okay. By his chin, there's, there's bits of, of um, the hairs. A little bit on the round side. Okay. A little like little stripes uh, going with the, with the angle of his little chinny chin chin in a circular motion okay which will be covered with white a lot of what I did there will be covered with white streaks all right now trying to figure out if I got most of what I'm looking to get here and I think I I am I think that's pretty cool all right and we shall move uh, let me get rid of some of this here I want it a little bit closer all in here is a little darker up and around here a little dark there something like that all right that's not coming out too bad right We'll let that dry and all that fun stuff. Let's get to this guy's uh, white fur here. Now, you can have the paper work for you on this. I am going to use titanium white. Get me a nice batch of it here. And the slightest hit of black very slight hint of black I'm gonna do a little bit of the shading areas on the bear first now it's just the slightest touch of, of black is in this white okay he has different um, patterns of, of, of fur going around in little streaks in different spots different areas okay and you really don't have to go too hard on it all right mainly down here on the bottom and you would shade it accordingly to where um, his skin pattern or his fur pattern is going all right it's a lot of it down towards the bottom here and when you get to the part where it mixes in a little and it does okay it all depends on how much of this you want shown and you want it in a circular motion all right some of it a little thicker than others I'll show you how to highlight a little bit of this. But he has a pet of thickness right up in here. And then it kind of loosens up, goes a little gray, and it just disappears into the black. Alright, I'm going to let that also dry. Okay. His fur in here. I'm going to still use this little bit of gray I got. It's very light, just a touch of water, slight touch. You're going to use the bristles. The lightest touch of bristles. If you have to practice, practice. Well, you need more water than that. Just wet it up a little bit. You're gonna use the bristles, like like so. You can see the streaks I'm doing up there. You have those streaks coming from the bear, the white going out. Okay. If you can see what I'm doing. If not, I'll, I'll show it to you. And up around his little chin, around here, 
just deadening some of the white that I did have up around there. Okay, and I'm going to continue some little streaks. Just little patches here and there. Go along with the fur pattern of the animal. Alright, if it's a little crescent curve, you do the curve. Okay. There's some of them in here. It's a little more white. Little dots going in the inside. Make it about as stark white as you can. I'm looking at the picture itself. Little curves here and there. Up here where it kind of meets with some of the tufts and the patches of hair he has. Like so. It's not really terribly difficult to do. Okay. Around this edge in here, now some of I you see some of the green blended in. That is fine. That is okay. I'm using nothing but pure titanium white. Around this edge, I'm going to just tap. Now his outside edges got little fine hairs. You're going into the paint and you're going to pull and lift. Okay. I'm going to tap some of this in and pull and lift and go in varying directions. Some of the hairs stick out more than others. Some don't stick out at all. Okay. For any little 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 bumps, little micro bumps, uh, little micro hairs just sticking up out of his back in various spots. If you want to tap upside down to do it, that's also fine. Okay, whatever floats your boat, whatever um, effect that pleases you, something like that. All right. Same thing over here. I'm gonna wet the wool, wet this uh, the bristles a little bit, just a, just a tiny bit. I'm going around his ears. It's a little tufts of white around it. Very light touch, because you can always go over it again. Okay. And same thing around. Where he's laying his head at, he had the bristles come a little straighter. All right. Now, if you get a batch of long hairs almost in a row, you could easily take that out with um, uh, black. Now, all I'm doing is stroking the brush against his the white and just lifting up. just in varying places up here around the top of his head definitely has some sticking up like so he is a baby so he's kind of fluffy and puffy all over the place you know add to the cuteness factor I would suppose if you're into that type of thing and most are okay even down below, you come back to it, have stronger tufts of hair. That's the patches where, where the outline isn't so prominent. All right. There we go. Uh, he's turned out to be a cute little guy. I would guess. I'm going to take the fine uh, the uh, line brush. Try this off a little bit. Put it back. Let's get some pure white again. Uh, you're gonna dip into the water with your highlighter, your liner brush, script liner brush, however you want to call it. I'm getting the ink, the titanium white, to a very inky consistency, a little thick. Okay, and I will gently place some bright white circular motion where I feel it needs 
the half thumb. Okay. Just here and there. I want my white to be a little thicker, a little more opaque. And just in varying places here and there. This is pretty much a judgment call. It's all on you. How, how much of, of um, the hair you want to be patched. And the total look entirely up to you. It's your world. How you want the, uh, the animal represented. Okay. Even on the bridge of his nose, I said I wanted the little more uh, detailed specks. And I'm doing that right now. Okay. Even on his where uh, his lips and the fur connect throwing a few hairs in there okay just like so okay in here I'm just doing a little taps in the semicircular direction even over some of the black marks I have around it it covers some of that up like so all right. If you want, this is your judgment call. If you want to gray in some of that fur, okay. Now what I'm doing, I did get some black. I'm touching into the white. I don't want it overly gray, because it will show. Believe it or not, it will make a difference. And just in spots, if you want to highlight or shade in some of the bear's um, fur where it shades in just a, a little little bit um, there are spots and patches where you can put some fine lines in there just to shade in a little bit you don't need a heavy amount of gray because with a bear that's mostly white it will show up like gangbusters believe me especially when this paint settles in okay you don't need too much of it just in spots like where he's laying down okay if you got to you can just group some of it some of its hair is in shadow in just certain areas believe me it will show and I'm just doing it in groups your eye will put all of this together all right, just like say, just in little groups here and there. I'm just looking, checking things out. All right, maybe some in here, and yeah, maybe a little bit in there. Okay, still looking, still examining, still checking things out here and there. Okay, I kind of like it. Looks pretty cool little fluffy guy all right no staring let's glaze a little shadow on this guy all right I'm dipping into a little bit of the black I'm gonna use the top of my lid here that's a little bit of black more water than paint especially if you're using black which I'm not really too fond of using but for this it would be perfect it's fine and make sure my head's not in the way. Right here in the edge, uh, I need more black than that. There we go. Because you want it thick enough to be shown, but you also want to show the details underneath whatever you're putting down. All right. But just a little, little fine edge of the shadow here. I want a little more black. I want it a little darker. I still got plenty of water on the brush. So that I'm not worried about. Yeah, that's fine. Some a little heavier than others. But mainly around the edge. Where the body connects with the wood. Okay. Wipe some of that away. I want it even darker than that. Like I said, my brush still has plenty of water in it, so you're not going to get a total 
solid line of black. Right in there. Using my finger to get it away from some of that gray. Something like that. If you got to take an artistic license, that's fine. Now what I just did was went in a little bit past the eye patch. But you know what? I'm looking at it and I like it. Therefore, I'm going to use that to my advantage. Some of that gray. Use my finger. Shade it right in there. Up underneath in here. And maybe a few tufts in here. Because I want to really bring out his chin a little bit. A little, a little more. Wrap right around there. And maybe a few strokes of his hair in the back here. You're going to have to tap. Right up in there. Something like that. Alright. Looks pretty good. Up in here. I'm going to bring in a little tuft of dark. Just a little bit right where his legs are. His hind quarters back there. Round it off a little bit. Like that. Alright? Not too much. Not too much at all. It doesn't take that much. Okay. As I'm staring at him, I will use some more Mars Black. The slightest bit of water to loosen up the Mars Black just a little bit. I'll use my little tray here. I want to darken in some of this. Keep it totally black right in here. I don't want too much white showing in certain areas of his body where it's black. Keep it dark. Now all I'm doing is just covering up little little spots of of uh, of uh, white that might be floating around in there. Okay. As it dries, it evaporates. A lot of that color you're not going to see anyway. Okay. And I think that's pretty good. All right, we're going to move on to his eyeballs. Take the strip, liner brush. His eyeball, I'm using blue, phthalo blue. Slightest little touch of black, but more phthalo blue than black. I'm going to get a little bit of water, just loosen it up a little bit. Now, you're not going to see, I mean, for cartoony effect, if you want to put white in his eyes, that's fine. Me, I don't think so. But I am going to give a little indication of where his eyes would be. Okay, and in doing so, because you really cannot see it, but it is blue-black, I'm going to take the tiniest bit of white, I'm going to mix that in with this blue-black mixture for the highlight. He really doesn't have much of one underneath. Okay. Now I'm going to put another highlight there because it would be totally white. I'll put one right in there like that. Okay. I'll give him a little bit of a 
of an eye line there. Something like that. So you can you can see he does have something there. A little curl, a little curve right there. Really doesn't need it for the other part of his eye. Matter of fact, let me zoom in so you can exactly see what I'm talking about. Alright, now you see his little bare face. Alright. You really don't have to see the other eye peeking up at you. Not necessarily. It's not, not really needed. Okay. I can or I don't have to put one in there. Okay. Um, if I did choose to, it would be nothing but a highlight anyway. It would have to be circular, as you know. Something like that. And I would put, like I said, this is more creative license than anything else. A little highlight right in there. So he's staring at you. Looking dead at you. That might be the selling point of your painting, just putting that in there, even though anatomically you didn't have to. Because it's in deep in the shadow anyway. But, you know, eh, whatever. Cuteness sells. So sometimes you have to take a little creative license, blah, 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 and all that sap sucker stuff and no, I'm just kidding all right <laughs> so that's basically I'm fumbling around the camera here because I'm sitting down all right basically mr. panda baby it's a baby panda adult pan pandas are a little more uh, a little more intimidating looking actually they're pretty nice size you really wouldn't want to uh, meet one in real life you know, no matter how cute they are, they are rather large and extremely powerful. So don't let all that cute fool you. It's still a wild animal and a big one. I will put my name to it. And I would like to thank you for yet watching another tutorial. I'm pretty sure many people will probably watch this one all the way through because, you know, it's a freaking panda. Especially one in particular whose name I shall not mention. Matter of fact, I guarantee she stood, she she stayed awake for this whole thing. We'll see if she watched it, if she makes a reply on my comment I just made. Okay. I will usually sign my name in a darker color, in a lighter color, but. This is fine. Actually, I just made a mistake. That's the good thing about acrylics. Very forgiving you when you screw up. I almost put the wrong month. There we go. If I choose to do this as the next live tutorial, somebody will be getting a panda. Alright, once again, Thank you oh so very much for watching this tutorial. Um, leave comments below. If you like what you see, subscribe. There will be many more like this. And uh, any questions, put it either on the YouTube site or when I take a picture of this thing and post it. Leave questions there. I will answer them. I do look at them. Um, as of late, there's been quite a few. So, um. I will check them out, all right, and, uh, and just leave leave your comments and just let me know what you think uh, of this rendering. I'm just getting rid of some of this, this black with solid black, getting rid of some of the white within it with solid black. Yeah. I usually do fine tune when I'm done recording, but this is pretty much fine. It's pretty much it. Like I said, I'm just making solid some areas that should be solid and that's all she wrote for Mr. Panda Bear. Uh, let's get rid of some of that. Darken that part in there. Need a little more dark. Uh, Alright, just like that. That's fine. Alright guys, once again thank you very much. Leave comments below. 
and I will see you next time. Take care. Happy painting. Bye-bye.